please, let's watch Tucker Carlson. Karl Marx, of course, he wrote that famous phrase in 1848. The weird I watched the video about your car, and in it he said he hates people who go into your stream and tell you what his take is to farm drama. Exactly. It's so Thing fucking is, annoying. Pretty likely that Marx himself never met an actual worker. Wait a second. He didn't spend a decade in a cotton mill witnessing the oppression firsthand? No. Karl Marx never spent a moment in a factory. He was a rich kid who became a journalist. Of course he was. But for more than 150 years, Karl Marx inspired generations of other rich kids who also became journalists to repeat his line or variations of it. When I think of communists, when I think of like, <clears throat> yeah, when I think of like the works of Karl Marx inspiring fucking other rich kids who've never stepped foot inside of the factories, I think of like, I don't know, one of the largest communist parties on the fucking planet that has, um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see what the what the what the attendance is for communist parties in India. You know that that sort of shit, dude. I I think about Asshole. I think about how fucking I think about how how uh, the the farmers, for example, in India, that uh, that uh, successfully uh, broke the government's back, basically. Okay. Um, over the course of the uh, uh, past couple of months where they were actively protesting um, a, a rule change in, in how, was it grains that were, uh, like the way that grains were supposed to be privatized? Like the, the I don't want to fuck it up. Anyway, look, the point is this, okay? There are millions of fucking communists in the third world, in developing nations, in all of these other, uh, in all of these other countries that are not the, the classic, oh my God, you're just a fucking rich, uh, liberal who calls himself a fucking Marxist. Okay. Because people don't have a $5 sub to avoid the ads at the top of the hour. It was a year long protest. Yes. It's so fucking annoying. This approach is so American centric. And so, uh, Amerabrained. Yo, you know that the politics you support cause peasants in China to kill landlords slash rich elite like yourself? Is that the end game you're going for? Says stream snipe lol. Yeah, I'm a landlord, so I would, I, I would want the peasants to fucking murder me as, as I'm a landlord, as you know. Because I own, uh, properties where I engage in rent-seeking behavior. Uh, in the most parasitic way possible. So I would like to be uh, murdered in the landlord aside. You know, famous landlord me. Over time, workers became working men or working class, and then with feminism, working people or working families. But the idea itself never changed. Ordinary people, wage earners, are getting shafted. So they've got to unite. They've got to come together for protection and for... There's like, there are like six communist parties in India with almost the exact same name, and every single one of them has more members than the biggest party in the U.S. This yeah. was the idea, of course, behind the organized labor movement. And every Democratic president from Andrew Jackson until now has made the very same point over and over again. The noble people... Yeah, what's up? Like, what's up with the Democratic presidents? Weren't they fucking rich dickheads, dude? What, what, what's up? So, like, Karl Marx, rich kid, never stepped foot in a factory... All the fucking communists worldwide, including like, you know, the millions of fucking communists that are uh, farmers in India or, or I don't know, the revolutionary uh, uh, communist, revolutionary communists all around the fucking planet that have regularly fought against uh, American imperialism, which Tucker Carlson, of course, considers to be, or Western imperialism, which Tucker Carlson, of course, considers to be uh, uh, terrorists. He thinks that those guys are terrorists. Okay. All of those guys are just rich kids in, in, uh, who've never stepped foot in a factory. Um, what about you, Tucker? Tucker McNear, Buckley, Swanson, uh, Carlson? Uh, have you stepped foot in a factory, you dumb bitch? You are literally the richest of rich kids. So this thing that really frustrates me about like people who are constantly like, dude, Hassan, you bought a fucking Porsche, dude. You bought a fucking Porsche. How dare you? You can't be a socialist while buying a fucking Porsche. 
you're not really representing the interests of the working class. And then those motherfuckers turn around and watch Tucker Carlson, dude. Literally, like, the Swanson frozen food dynasty's very own Tucker Carlson. He is a better fucking representation for workers' rights? Really? It is. Conservatism is a mental disorder, for sure. No, huh. Does this look like someone who stepped foot in a factory? Yeah, this is Tucker Carlson, dude. Look at this. Look at this. The frattiest. You know? That guy represents your interests better, dude? Really? That's what you're going to tell me? More check brain rot. More That's a real fucking rot. working class More individual? Maybe you just agree with him and you More disagree with me because you're a fucking idiot More and you don't know what's uh, in your best interest. It's fine. You don't know. And you are going to be destined for a lifetime of subjugation either way. I guess it's better to fucking assume that that subjugation is happening because you are just not working hard enough or not working smart enough rather than recognizing that it's a consequence of systemic problems caused uh, by, by many, many centuries of attrition, okay? And that it's actually not your fault. And there are ways that you could potentially fight back against that. Maybe you don't want to think about all that. Maybe it makes you feel better that like, you know, you got a hypocrite commie over here. Oh, fuck this guy. You know? I like, I like the real working class, Tucker Carlson. Okay, have fun. Have fun with that, dude. Have fun in squalor. Have fun with the fucking budget shortfall built into your very existence. Maybe one day you'll bootstrap it, okay? Dog, he was four. Okay, that's a meme. That's a joke. Tucker Carlson himself, though, is a rich kid, a rich journalist who spent his entire career in the media and uh, is, again... From a very wealthy family. People of Scranton, you hear it even today. So Democrats have repeated that line often enough, you would think they really mean it. Do they really mean it? Let's take the test. You're saying so you not know. budget surplus, budget shortfall built into your existence. Watch what happens when actual workers, working people from working families who constitute the working class, actually come together as a group to protest how things are going. What happens then? Does the intellectual class greet these workers as heroes? Through a parade? Listen intently to their stories? Does NPR do a sympathetic... Oh, not can't be a hypocrite because Carlson is a hypocrite? I'm not a hypocrite, you fucking baboon. I'm not. I'm a hypocrite if you think socialism means you have to live in squalor. I'm a hypocrite if you think socialism means you just simply, like, even if people are just giving you fucking money, okay, when you have made this for free, when you have provided this content for free, and that everybody knows you can provide it for free, but people are like, listen, motherfucker, I watch you for eight hours every fucking day, okay? That means I see eight top-of-the-hour ad breaks, and I don't want to see those ad breaks anymore. I want to give you $5 a month, okay, to avoid those ad breaks. Or I want to give you $5 a month just because I appreciate what you do. I don't give a fuck. It's, it's worth it for me. Uh, I want to do that. And people are doing that. Then what's it to you? Why are you fucking losing your mind over it? What do you want me to do? Oh, donate 99% of it. No, I'm not going to do that. Okay, suck my dick. How about that? There it is. But you, on the other hand, you will get a fucking ad break. Okay. No, I'm not going to donate 99% uh, of uh, the, the fucking money that uh, people are giving me. I donate plenty, okay? But this is not about that anyway. This is not about donations, okay? Because donations don't fucking solve problems. And even when I literally raise money to solve direct problems, then nobody gives a fuck because even then it's like, oh, that's because you're trying to get a tax break. Okay. No, the real issue is you're fucking angry. And you think the, the guy, the messenger that's telling you why you're angry is the actual person at fault. He should not make money. If people have this attitude to you, why not Danny DeVito? Literally same shit except people like Danny and don't think they could do this. What? Job, whereas every liberal wants to bite your shit? That's the, the difference is, first of all, the difference is like Danny DeVito does not have a fucking stream that he opens every day where he talks to people. That's it. Not doing the right people got to support local. Dude, that shit's so... That's so frustrating, okay? I do that already. I do that. 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 It doesn't matter. 
Guess what? We're not solving anything, okay? I still do it regardless, but... But it doesn't matter. <laughs> It's true. Spend this on whatever because what you spend your money on is none of fucking business. At the Sen Abbey you keep me sane while working and I don't mind wasting Jeff Bezos money. I'd quite people so salty that you have money and are comfortable. That's life. They want you to live on Skid Row, bro. Even then, they'll say you're doing it posing. Okay. Lexi T, thank you for the five gifted subs. And Boj TV, thank you for the five gifted subs. Okay. Hmm, donated five dollars and said, Wow, it sounds, sounds like you like the free market. Dude, I love the free market, dude. The freer the market, the freer wow, the people. You know what I mean? Sounds like I'm such a good capitalist, life. dude. I get why capitalists get mad. They're mad because no matter how much fucking they got from their daddy, there's, there's a billionaire son, okay? Fucking hates me. I talk about it all the time. He hates me. He hates me. He's in like our extended group of friends, okay? This motherfucker hates me, Okay? Tells our group of friends all the time how much I, how much he thinks I'm a hypocrite. You know, oh, doing more capitalism, I see, whatever. Yeah, you know why? No matter what he does for the rest of his life, he's a billionaire son. Like, he, it's over. Like, he's never going to be able to fucking, he's never going to be able to work uh, to a place where, like, you know, he, he, he passes his father. He's always going to live in his father's shadow. Okay. And it's, I mean, his life is fine. Like, his life is fucking great, you know? He's insanely rich. Insanely rich. Like. But ultimately, he's always, I'm always gonna, I'm always gonna have that over him. You know what I mean? Like, bitch, I worked for this. I'm just saying. And I'm happy. That's the other thing. I work for this, and I'm happy. I hate. Literally one of the least exploitative ways to make money. Like that Gary V story? I mean, kind of. I just avoided the ad wide people happy. Why is it so important to defend the Porsche for you? Just curious. Ugh, just curious, Andes are so fucking annoying. It's not important for me to defend the Porsche. It's just, I'm, I'm making a fucking purchase because I can. It's it. And it's incredibly fucking stupid that people think that they can, like, keep fucking hammering me over the head with it. Here you go. I hope that, that you know, uh, opened up your curiosity. I hope that was a good enough answer for your curiosity. Just curious, Andes. feature on them pay my or tuition for black history month just curious <laughs> good one do self-described progressives recoil in revulsion justifying it because you're insecure about it no of course not you fucking idiots why would i be insecure because like a bunch of pathetic mouth breathing neck bearded dickheads who have never walked outside think that it's a good fucking own yeah dude i'm so fucking insecure about it dude you really you really got it. No, of course not. Of course not. I'm not insecure about the fucking house and I'm not in insecure about the car. Well, no. Not even remotely. Oh God, what am I doing? Mods, ban every single person that is trying to bait me going forward, please. Uh, they are literally trying to fucking bring the conversation back up over and over again. 99.9% .9 of the people in this community or the people that come into the stream are... Not even remotely interested in having this conversation over and over again. Let's continue. Horror at the grubbiness of the people who, as we used to say, work for a living. Do liberals immediately denounce them as Nazis and call for their suppression by force? That's the question. What's the answer? Well, ask Trump voters what happens. They'll know. 
Or consider what's happening right now in Canada. Thousands of truck drivers have descended on Ottawa, the capital city, to protest the tyranny of Justin Trudeau's government. Justin Trudeau does not like truck drivers. He thinks they're revolting. Justin Trudeau likes private equity barons and tech... Bro, these guys are a tiny fraction of the truck drivers, okay? They're not a real constituency. They're not a real part of the truck drivers. They're not, they're like, there's like a couple of these, okay? There's a couple of truck drivers in there. Most of the other people are not even fucking truck drivers themselves. They're just anti-vaxxer hogs, okay? 90% of the truck drivers in Canada are vaccinated. That's it, 90%. Moguls and other people who give him money. Trudeau is not in Ottawa right now. In fact, he and his family fled when the truck drivers arrived and they've been in hiding ever since. So when the revolution he has been calling for finally arrived, Justin Trudeau wasn't there to see it. He ran away in terror, kind of sad. So instead, in his place, his friend Mark Carney has been speaking for him. Carney is a former Goldman Sachs executive who many believe will replace Justin Trudeau if Trudeau ever decides to give up power. In a recent op-ed, Mark Carney vented his rage at the impudent truckers in Ottawa and anyone who sent them money on the internet. Quote, anyone sending money to the convoy should be in no doubt, Carney wrote, you are funding sedition. Foreign funders of an insurrection interfered in our domestic affairs from the start. Got that? It's not a protest. It's sedition. It's an insurrection. Clearly, Mark Carney's been watching a lot of CNN up there in Canada. And that's why he's concluded the truckers should be crushed by force. Quote, those who are still helping to extend this occupation must be identified and punished to the full force of the law. Let's go, police state. Should be prosecuted. If they're not prosecuted, Mark Carney fears, quote, the constant blaring of horns at all hours will bankrupt our businesses. Are you laughing yet? So the very same finance ghouls who cheered lockdowns for two solid years are now deeply concerned that small businesses might be hurt by the trucker protests. Hilarious. It'd be interesting, by the way, to poll small business owners in Ottawa to see what they think. How do they feel about the truckers? Somehow you know exactly what those results would be, but no one's doing that poll, of course. Wait, what? First of all, what what would the results be? That like, does Tucker Carlson think that they would be, I mean, they are petite bourgeoisie, right? So, like, he might be wrong. Uh, he might be right. Let the brain rot begin. I look forward to many glorious stun locks. But I'm pretty sure, regardless of whether whether or not like these fucking uh, business owners in Ottawa are fans of the the vaccine mandate or not, does not change the reality that they definitely don't like what the fucking truckers are doing. <clears throat> For the record. Instead, they found an easier way. Justin Trudeau has just ordered police to shut the whole thing down. How do you do that? How do you stop a truck protest? Simple. You seize their fuel. That's exactly what police in Canada are doing. Watch. Let's go! So, in fact, yes, they are taking fuel right away for people as they attempt to fuel their vehicle. You need to watch Madeline Pendleton's latest TikTok and clear the air. Who the fuck is Madeline Pendleton? We need Christian. I don't know who this person is. I'm just going to ban people. Whenever people say you need to watch some fucking TikToker and clear the air, I don't know who that is. I'm just going to ban people, okay? I I don't want to watch TikTok. I never want to watch TikTok. TikTok is fucking disgusting. It's annoying. Shut the fuck up. I'm banning everybody. I don't give a fuck. I'm a Stalinist. Okay. So we are, through much practice, connoisseurs of irony. So let's pause a moment to savor the irony here. The very same people who told us we had to defund the police are now telling the police to seize fuel from working class Canadians who are trying to stay alive in Arctic temperatures. As they used to say in the 1960s, scratch a liberal and you will find a fascist. That was a Black Panther slogan, actually. They weren't entirely stupid. In fact, in this case, they were absolutely right. According to Justin Trudeau, possessing gasoline in the city of Ottawa is now a crime. Oh my God.
I love that, like... I love that the only time Tucker Carlson is pro-worker is when 90% of the workers are vaccinated already. And it's like literally 10% of workers that are making it seem like they have outside representation, that have outsized representation. It was funny, not actually drama at all, really. Okay, well, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I just don't... I don't care. I don't care. Wait, the TikTok you ban them over is actually a stand post, actually? Wait, it is? Then why was that person saying you need to clear the air? Oh my god, I'm at work and I really, really hope I'm not in an internet fight with Hassan Piker because that would be weird. To be clear, I have no strong feelings about Hassan Piker, but since we do operate off of a council structure at work, I have informed all of my coworkers that we might be in an internet feud. I'm not exactly sure. What? No. What the fuck? That's not true. And their consensus was that they think he is very hot, so that if he is actually feuding with us, he needs to redistribute his resources and wealth by taking them all out for drinks because they are hot too. That's the pitch from the from the, the the coworkers. I don't know. So Hassan Piker, if you see this, my coworkers want to make out with you, and I think that's how we end this together. Um, they also said, oh no, does this mean mom and dad are fighting? So I don't, apparently we are my coworkers' parents, but also they want to make out with, there's some, it's like a Freud thing happening. I don't, but on behalf of the council, that's it. Oh my God. I'm in okay. I feel bad that I banned that person for, I thought they were drama farming because I didn't know who this Madeline Pendleton person was. Um. Okay, I mean, good, good, uh, good TikTok. TikTok the other day. This is cringe? No, dude, no. This is not cringe, okay? I just want, I want more of this, okay? I'm sick and tired of people being like, mm, Hassan is this, Hassan is that. It's very frustrating. Uh, it's just... I sincerely hope you start doing your fucking job. I sincerely hope you start doing your fucking job. I'm losing to a chair. I'm losing to a fucking chair right now. Yeah. Ugh. I'm losing to a chair. Even worse, I'm losing to a son in a chair. <laughs> Make out with the workers? Um, maybe. Okay, let's continue. Fine. Now, to be clear, Ottawa didn't declare the state of emergency because the truckers lit a courthouse on fire, or shot someone, or leveled a church. BLM did all of those things, but Justin Trudeau strongly supports BLM. He reaffirmed his support the other day. Here's the problem. Wait. Bro, it would be so fucking tight. If for once, just for me, just for me, one government treated these fucking sick, disgusting hogs like they normally treat Black Lives Matter protesters. Like, can I not get a little bit of police brutality as a treat, dude? Like, and not the full BLM package. I'm not talking like the government executes, assassinates, allegedly, the leaders of the movement that didn't become like, you know, 
Verizon spokespersons. Like all the fucking black people, all the black activists in Ferguson that died under mysterious causes. You know, the ones that didn't fucking funnel funds away from, um, you know, funerals to their own pockets or whatever. I'm talking like, I'm, I don't even talk, I'm not even saying like, you know, decapitate the movement. Just like regular shit, you know what I mean? Like beat them up a little bit. What the fuck? Can I get a little police brutality? It's just like, I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, why can't, why can't we see like a little, they put some pepper on it, dude. Oh no, that's too much pepper. That's what I want to say. Just a little bit of pepper, you know? Oh, mustard. <laughs> well, okay. Mustard. Mustard might be going too far, okay? We're not, I'm not saying, like, you know, do what Saddam did to the Kurds. I just mean, like, like a little bit of police brutality, dude. Come on. Especially because, okay, here. <clears throat> okay, here's my take. You get a little bit of police brutality, but... What you receive is actual victimhood for the first time in your entire life. And this is what people want. A lot of, a lot of white folk, especially a lot of reactionary conservative white folk, they constantly are looking for opportunities to claim victimhood. Can you imagine if you actually got your ass beat by a cop? Like if you got your fucking skull pummeled in, like you would literally have like a little bit of police brutality. You could say, oh, I'm, I'm a victim. Like, actually, you could actually be a victim. That's a pretty good deal, I think. That's my trade deal. Hi. You receive a little bit of police brutality. You, you, you get victimhood. Like legitimate victimhood talking points. My brain is ruined. Golden sponge cakes with a vanilla flavor topping covered with a citrusy lemon. Oh no. Oh no. That's citrusy. Yeah. Oh, yeah brother. Like citrus pussy. Fucking crazy. And we're going to let the mayor of <coughs> Ottawa or Ottawa as it's correctly pronounced in Ojibwa, explain why peaceful truck drivers pose an imminent danger to Canada. It's disturbing when you see the, the protests turning into what looks like some kind of a fun carnival where they've got bouncy castles. Yo, that stuff is not disturbing. That stuff is actually cool. Like, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of that. But what's disturbing is, first of all, they're annoying, and I hate that more than anything else, okay? They're just like annoying for no good reason. Like there's no good reason for you to be protesting. And also on top of that, you're going to be fucking annoying. No shot. Go to jail. Right. But the other part of it that is like beyond, uh, and being a nuisance is like, they're like yelling at people. They're fucking like screaming at like random Ottawans that live in Ottawa for obviously the reason that like nothing goes on in Ottawa. You know what I mean? Like, you can't go to Ottawa and fuck shit up. These people literally live there because it's like, you know, nothing happens in Ottawa. Okay? So now you're just like harassing them when they just want to be chill, you know what I mean? That's fucked up. Hassle. ...and hot tubs and saunas. A complete uh, insult to the people who are putting up with this nonsense for the last seven days. And it shows a great deal of ins insensitivity. It's like They've got bouncy castles for kids, growls the childless mayor of Ottawa. Let's hear yeah, like them. a like a residential building arson thing happened recently. Like people don't feel safe. That's not cool. But obviously, like I I do not care about like the fucking honking and shit. Like I don't. I think you know that stuff's funny. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's a dark scene in Truckistan tonight. The kids are on the bouncy castles. 
Of course, at the same time, their parents are flaunting the authority of the people in charge, and that is the crime. Watch this protester, a white supremacist, explain his motives for protest. Where the hell were you? You weren't there, but now you want to come out in the freezing cold to oppose my fundamental human rights and freedoms. I'm not going to have it. I'm a black man standing beside my brother right here. This is my brother right. right here. Yes, yes. And none of you have the right to tell me who to associate with and who not to associate with me because you did not come out and voice your concerns for the fact that Justin Trudeau banned me from leaving this country because of my medical decision, because I made a decision that he did not like. Shut up, racist. Go back to Jamaica with your white supremacy nonsense. By the way, no one in Canada's government or the media in Canada, which is mostly controlled by the government, is engaging with any of the arguments of people like that. Instead, they've gone directly to force, as crumbling regimes always do. They don't have an argument to make. All they have is police power, and they're using them. Officials in Ottawa just threatened to criminally investigate the California company GoFundMe because truckers raised about $10 million on the platform. Here's Ottawa's police chief bragging about stealing that money. We have, through the efforts of Deputy Bell, Christiane Hino, uh, the mayor and his staff, we've been able to shut down the GoFunding program. That's a temporary reprieve because the funds are already moving in different directions. We are now going after supply and, and fuel coming into the area through investigations and intelligence operations and interdictions, all of which are, were underway yesterday, fully underway today. Intelligence operations? This is a peaceful political protest. No one has shown any evidence to the contrary. It's not a drug trafficking or human trafficking operation. It's not Al-Qaeda. These are Canadian citizens who drive trucks for a living. But they're being treated like a terror group. Go f All of which are, were underway yesterday, fully underway today. Funding pro Bragging of a terror group. GoFundMe shown any evidence to the contrary. It's not a drug trafficking or human trafficking operation. It's not Al-Qaeda. These are Canadian citizens who drive trucks for a living. But they're being treated like a terror group. GoFundMe announced it would redirect the $10 million raised by supporters of the truckers to charities of its choice, presumably BLM, which it has supported since the very beginning. In other words, GoFundMe planned to steal that money. They were Remember CHOP in Seattle and truckers' coverage of that and how it was like a... <clears throat> Truckers coverage of that and how it was like a Cyberpunk 20 Cyberpunk 2077 trailer. Yeah, I do remember I had that famous meme where I played the Cyberpunk 2077 uh, music over it. Uh, yes, I am familiar. Yes, I do remember. Except, you know. Of course, this is the trucker, the trucker version of chop. Dude, I'm not going to rewind. 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 Stop. 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 Stop asking me to rewind every fucking time. Stop. Ninety nine point nine percent of the circumstances where I missed something. And I rewind, it's not worth it. Half a year of brain rot bog. I rewind it. I scroll through it. I didn't rewind hard enough. I'm not rewinding again. We missed it. I missed it. I'm sorry. We're stopped from doing this, by the way, by a number of American attorneys general who threatened to sue the company. So the company backed off and they're going to refund the money, supposedly. But still the truckers, the people for whom this money was intended, will not get it. So in the absence of GoFundMe doing what it's supposed to do, others are filling the gap. An alternative crowdfunding website one, called please? Give, Send, Go has stepped up and raised already more than $5 million for the truckers. How long till they try to shut that down too? Some Canadians are clearly worried about that. They're turning to cryptocurrency. Tallycoin, for example, is a small crowdfunding service that uses Bitcoin. It's not controlled by banks. That's the point. Amazing. They're hosting a fundraiser for the truckers. Now, why is this appealing? No one can steal the money. No government can pressure anyone. Oh, dude. It's not suspicious that there is so much money involved in this. Like for, you know, like what? Like a hundred truckers were able to get no longer a nine millions. Time. And I mean, millions of dollars in funding. This is literally like they're trying to do a, uh, the American reactionaries are trying to do a color revolution. Okay. 
And it's the opposite of like the civil society fucking uh, NGO uh, grift. It's like using the most reactionary, which is, uh, I mean, I guess that is the State Department. That's what they do regularly. Uh, usually they, they just... People are dumping like 200k. I chat you into it. Today, hassle. Like one tapping 200k and shit. Depends if there are many people contributing small amounts, then no. Look at Twitch streamer earnings. No, dude. Twitch streamer, there's not a Twitch streamer on the planet that makes five million dollars a month, okay? Are you out of your fucking mind? I mean, you are. You, you think that. And, and no, people are dumping so much money into it. There was a guy who gave $200,000. No, XQC doesn't make five million a month either. What? Guys, they raised $10 million on the first uh, round on GoFundMe, and then immediately another $5 million. ...anyone to turn the money over, because governments don't control crypto. Bitcoin goes from person A to person B, and all the intermediary does, the company, is connect the two. It's pretty appealing. And you can imagine the long-term consequences right. here. Right. If the people in charge in this country and in Canada want to make the U.S. dollar irrelevant... They'll keep acting like this, and soon that it will be. Either way, it's becoming very clear that the only way around the stranglehold that technology has on our human rights is decentralization. That doesn't apply just to crowdfunding, but more than anything, to communication. You can't organize if you can't talk to other people. So Facebook, for example, to shut down the Convoy to DC group, which had amassed 134,000 followers in just two days. No one's allowed to promote the organization anymore. Facebook all day today has been suppressing positive articles about the truckers in Canada. Of course they are. That seems like a story, but our media have ignored it. Instead, everyone in New York and My DC and Los right Angeles is cheering on the right. national security state and its alliance with Silicon Valley as they come together to crush a human rights movement. It makes sense. Those with the so-called Freedom Convoy say they're staying put until vaccine mandates are dropped, the masks come off, and life returns to the way it was. This uh, whole event has gone beyond just vaccines, and it is now about the entire ordeal. We're asking for our freedom. That's all we want. So they've been free. Free to park big rigs right next to the Prime Minister's office. Free to set up camp in front of the country's national parliament. Ottawa police say they have learned much in the past week, especially after reports of assaults, intimidation, and allegations of hate speech and symbols. This remains, as it was from the beginning, an increasingly volatile and increasingly dangerous demonstration. And it is spreading like a... Con Dude, I've never seen... Another country where, like, a group of individuals just want to fucking kill themselves so hard. Like, it, the West is falling. It really is. And not because, like, homosexual Marxism or whatever Jordan Peterson thinks. It's this. It's like American brain rot. <clears throat> it's so wild like we we have a fucking vaccine and motherfuckers don't want to take it to the degree where like you know government has to take initiative and punish you for not getting the vaccine and these people are like nah fam i want to die like fuck my shit up covid like i'm ready to fucking fight contagion itself right across the country it's spreading like a contagion now you knew that cnn was the praetorian guard for our ruling class did you know they serve the same role in canada and what other countries how much money does cnn take from the government of he's doing that you're doing that tucker you're doing that for the other side what much you're literally doing that but just for the reactionary else. side Why are you covering the Canadian news?
of Canada. That'd be worth finding out. They described what's happening in Ottawa as a, quote, violent and dangerous demonstration. Let's really? Start. Where's the violence coming from? The only people getting injured or have been injured so far are the protesters, the truckers. In Winnipeg on Friday, an anarchist called David Zegarak drove his Jeep into four people who were protesting vax mandates. You're seeing that on the screen right now. Zegarak didn't stop after hitting the people. He fled. Police were literally arrested him. Of course, police are treating the incident like a hit and run. Nothing political. It's not domestic terrorism or anything. David Zegarak has views they agree with. He's a progressive, a true believer. How much is he a true believer? Well, if you look closely, you'll notice that Zegarak has his mask on, driving alone in his car during the assault. Prime Wait. Maybe he was doing that so he could fucking hide his face, bro. <laughs> so wait, what happened? <clears throat> I mean, the license plate is right there. The only anarchist with a plan. Is he an anarchist? I don't know anything about this guy. Evidence of mental illness, something you see in this country all the time. And it makes you wonder, if you're driving alone with a mask on, do you pose a danger to pedestrians? Entirely possible. Someone should fund a study on that. That seems like a big story, especially since it's happening just an hour from our own border. All of this. The question is, how long before protests like this come here? Clearly, our media are worried about that. Watch the morning news anchors on MSNBC. They're deeply, deeply concerned about these uppity working class people. What's really funny is like, Republican state legislatures quite literally made what that guy did legal. Like they, I mean, you can do that with your car. You can already do that with a gun. So like, Tucker Carlson's website, fun fact, Daily Caller, had to delete a compilation when that Nazi at Charlottesville killed Heather Heyer. Daily Caller literally had a compilation of... of People running over protesters, like Republicans in their pickup trucks running over protesters. No, not Daily Wire, Daily Caller. Tucker Carlson's website. No. Not Daily Wire, Daily Caller. Tucker Carlson owns web, uh, that website people watch where were these protests when people were required to give their children five vaccines they were in the doctor's office getting they vaccines started. they were in the doctor's office getting vaccine and they were making fun of left-wingers on the west coast no daily caller not the daily wire ben shapiro owns the daily wire dr carlson owns the daily caller fuck The amount of people at the, the, the Daily Wire? I'm gonna nuke my fucking Discord. This has to be coming from like an area of or organized. I don't think chat is this fucking stupid. I don't think my chat is this fucking stupid on its own. It has to be like organized for people to just be this uh, stupid on purpose. Like deliberately obtuse. For being loopy. <sighs> anti-vaxxers okay. now they have met the enemy and the enemy their enemy is themselves because yes. they've become what they hated yeah. it's a cult so here you have joe and mika sneering from their studio in florida at the freezing wage earner stuck outside in ottawa in february because they want their human rights screw them would joe scarborough say that to their faces
Probably not. Scarborough's famously tough on young female employees. Some say he's an absolute killer in the office. But it's hard to imagine Scarborough talking like this if there was an actual Canadian trucker in the room. Truckers in this country are watching all of this, and you wonder, what do they think about it? What would happen if American truck drivers decided they'd had enough of people like Joe Scarborough and went on strike? What would happen then? Well, this country would stop immediately. No more deliveries of It's true, and that would be fucking awesome. Except I'm pretty sure, like... Is the Teamsters the fucking like despise Tucker Carlson. Like, yeah, there's obviously going to still be uh, some... Wait, that's awesome. What the fuck? This is awesome. Like, I really do hope that that happens. That would be great. Yeah. But... God, I just... I want more fucking actual labor momentum just so, like... Obviously, first and foremost, so that, you know, workers can get uh, better benefits, higher pay for all the obvious good reasons. And then, you know, more people joining labor unions, always a good thing. But also the secondary reason why I wanted it is so that Tucker Carlson, who's like Mr. Working Class, has to go back and fucking cry about like how the Teamsters claim to be the side of the working class. And yet they have a $1.8 billion strike fund. Doesn't seem so working class to me, does it? That's right. The Teamsters make $100,000 uh, on average on their salaries. Somewhere as high as $250,000 in a state like California. Doesn't seem so working class, does it? Like, he will turn on fucking truckers so quick. And those are like actual talking points that he would use too. Which, by the way, speaking of the Teamsters, uh, the Teamsters Canada has already denounced the... Uh, <clears throat> Teamsters Canada has already denounced uh, the, the truck drivers, and they said the real enemy for truckers is COVID-19. Statement by Francois Laporte, president of Teamsters Canada, representing over 55,000 professional drivers across Canada. But of course... You know, that goes against Tucker Carlson, who's trying to just simply propagandize. The only time that these motherfuckers want... The only time that Republicans ever fucking get on board with uh, labor unions. Well, I mean, it's not even labor unions. Let's right. be real. This is not even labor unions. But the only time Republicans get on board with like labor action is if they're at it is if it's. Is if it's the workers uh, that do not represent a union or anything like that. Okay. And they only represent like 10% of the workers. And it's actually protesting against workplace safety provisions. It's crazy. Anything. Over time, that would mean starvation for people in the cities. But even in the short term, there would be profound suffering in this country. For example, and this is something that too few people outside hey, of television even did some violence. The world's... I spoke with him. He's in pain. He's four foot ten, a retired janitor with eleven grandkids, four great grand, four great grandkids. If this is disgraceful treatment of a seventy eight year old for honking his horn and thumbs up to a trucker is acceptable, dude, that's that's hilarious, dude. That's awesome. That's fucking dope. For what? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, hey, that's assault. I've got it all on video. <laughs> yeah, he failed to ID. You're back. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. It, 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 that is fucked up. Okay, I'm wrong. I, I was wrong. I was like, man, it'll make me feel good, but it's not. Police brutality is still unacceptable regardless. I mean, this man is just... They're arresting Danny DeVito. I got my wish, but like, I just want... I don't know. I want one of those like actual hogs to get like fucking busted. Hey, hey, <laughs> get back, Stop get back. You get back. We're back. Hey, We're filming. Get back. We're doing our get part. It's all on video. No, don't say anything. Don't say anything. You're a fucking goof. Hey, Ritz, Ritz. You're a fucking goof. 
Yo, yo, Canadians are so funny, dude. I can't. I absolutely love Canadians like getting into altercations with the police or just each other. They're so funny. They're like, you're a fool. You're a goof. You're a goofball, buddy. Wait, is goof actually the the? Oh wait, no, that's motherfucker. Yeah, okay. What's the one for? What's the what's the use? What's the term that they use for for pedo pedophile? Oh, is it goof? Oh, it is goof. Okay, it is goof. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's why goof is important. Goof is not like goof means uh, so child molester. Don't, don't, don't say anything. Hey, goof? Don't what say anything. You, you know what a goof is? You, you know what a goof You're is? Fucking goof. Hey, Rich, Rich, stand down. Stand down. Stand down. Rich, no, it's peaceful. No, let, let them, let them do. Don't fucking attack me, you fucking goof. Don't engage. Fucking not doing shit. Touch me. Dude, it's kind of funny that like, like those guys have never, those guys have never had an altercation with police before. Like they are so fucking, they are so aggro. This is going right to the media. YouTube, what's your name and badge number? What's your name and badge, badge number? What's your name and badge number? All right, stand down, Hank, stand down. Calling him a goof is one thing, but now you're getting a little heated, my friend. Don't do it. What's your name and badge number? Yeah, you're Look, they're hurting an old man, a Canadian citizen. It's communism. This is communism. He's scared. Communist. Call your police chief. He'll back you up. Call the police. Call your police chief. That was awesome. He dropped his toonies. What's that? Dude, Canada is not a real country. I swear to God. Listen, Canada, you keep this shit up. We are going to invade. Okay. I'm afraid I must report that we will invade. Okay. We will take over. We will turn you into a part of the uh, Great Lakes. Uh, region. Toonie, $2. Looney, $1. Let's go. That's how fucking weird it is up there. I spoke with him. He's in pain. He's four foot ten. A retired janitor with eleven grandkids. Like, what the fuck's a retired janitor doing at the trucker convoy? You know what I mean? Like, okay, bro. If this disgraceful treatment of a seventy year old, seventy eight year old for honking his horn and thumbs up to a trucker is acceptable, then no one is safe. Wait, what? Doug Ford? Oh, no one is safe. Yeah, dude, totally. Has Chad the Canadian the the Canadian cops are coming after you. They're going to beat the shit out of you, too. That's right. Here's me on what transpired today with Starbucks firing seven workers in Memphis or what SB Workers United says amounts to virtually the entire union leadership in Memphis. Starbucks says it fired the workers for violating company policies. Workers say it was retaliation. One thing to note is that it's illegal retaliation by the employer it happens all the time. One study found that employers fire 34%. Or, or employers find fire workers in 34% of union campaigns. As a GoFundMe for the fire, uh, Starbucks or worker states, workers should not be afraid to speak to the media to organize in our stores or to fight for our right to have a union. The same right Dr. King was killed while fighting for in our city. On MLK Day this year, Memphis Starbucks employees announced their union drive. Starbucks tweeted that the company is inspired by Dr. MLK Jr.'s legacy. You can still find an invitation to volunteer with Starbucks in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Day on the company's website. At Starbucks, the copy reads, We believe that the positive actions we take together strengthen our communities and make us all better. 
Taking action together? Well, now there's an idea about which their workers in Memphis yeah, have a few thoughts. Honked his horn in a residential neighborhood for 10 days straight without end and received multiple warnings. Bro, there is no better story. There is no better. There is no better fucking story about how uh, capitalist corporations capitalize on, you know, revolutionary leaders whitewash their legacy and also do horribly, th horrible, awful things that the, those same revolutionary organizers, leaders would despise in the process of, of uplifting a whitewashed narrative or a whitewashed version of them. That's it. Talking about MLK while simultaneously fucking firing all the union organizers, all the people that want to organize a uh, union in the workplace in Memphis. That's great. The entire supply of Botox is manufactured on the west coast of Ireland. That's a long way from here. In fact, it's a 4,000 mile long supply chain from the Allergan plant in Westport, Ireland to Jupiter, Florida. Now, people at MSNBC might not be aware of this, but our country has no domestic Botox production. Along with vitamin C and antibiotics, it's one of the life-saving pharmaceutical products we have recklessly offshored. So if the trucks stop delivering, the Botox stops coming. And suddenly your morning television anchors are going to look like they're 58 years old, which actually they are. Could that happen? Is it impossible? No, it's not impossible. The people in charge aren't really thinking this through. Most of the time, trends start in the United States and they move north to Canada. But this time, the opposite could happen. The protests now over... Hell yeah, 17 months. COVID restriction protests block traffic at U.S. Canada. COVID restrictions in Canada. A state of emergency has been declared in Ottawa, and now protesters are blocking traffic, shutting down the nation's busiest international border crossing. 